there's just something really cool about a nice looking tree that's colorful, vibrant on the game table that adds a lot to the experience. And I promised somebody about six months ago that I would make this build on my channel. I'm finally getting to it and I have to tell you, I wish I got to it a lot sooner. And we're going to do it this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, I'm finally getting to a build that I've been meaning to get to for quite some time. And it's this really cool looking tree. I had this at a show that I did probably about six or seven months ago. I promised somebody there I would do it. And I wanted to make a few changes to the tree that I had at that show. And I wanted to get the canopy just right. And I think I finally got there. And a really cool feature about this tree is that I guarantee you have almost all the ingredients you need right now in your house to make this build. A paper towel roll, some aluminum foil, hot glue, and even if you have an old pillow laying around the house, you can spray paint the batting green in that to get yourself going on the canopy. Now, to do the canopy, some comb foliage, a few different colors, and if you want to take it that step further uh, for embellishments, for fungus, some birds, and even a little squirrel up top, I'll have Amazon links in the description below to all those items where you can pick those up. So, if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. Okay, so the plan for this build is to make this tree with as few unique items as possible. So I'm gonna use a paper towel roll for the main trunk of this tree. And to form the base of the tree, to give it some shape, we're gonna use some aluminum foil. And I really like to use aluminum foil because you can really mold it to whatever you're working on pretty decently. The only issue is going to be, you know, when you have to correct something, obviously it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. But as you can see, you can really sculpt the tree and the trunk the way you want with this foil and it holds really nice. A little bit of hot glue and it holds it together. Now I want this tree also to feel like a heavy, sturdy tree, not something that's going to tip over. So adding a nice rubber base to it is a decent feature that I wanted to have, simple to do, add a little bit of hot glue, press it on some parchment paper, and you're all set. Now, my wife had gone to the store, I asked her to get me some barbecue skewers for this craft, and she had some really thick ones. I'm not sure the brand of these, but uh, it turned out to be really nice to have these. It's not totally necessary, but it does help to form the aluminum foil around each branch to have some type of you know piece of wood or a piece of um, copper or something in the middle of this to kind of hold its shape. Again, not necessary though. Now as you can see, the base of the trunk, which is in my right hand, is going to be a lot thicker than the tip of the uh, limb actually in my left hand. So the harder you squeeze and twist, obviously the smaller that limb's gonna get closer towards the end, which is what we're going for. So as you can see, I pre-fitted this into the top of the toilet paper roll. You can see that indent where I placed the glue. And we're going to take all these trunks, or the most of them, and we're going to place them right on top of the toilet paper roll, or the paper towel roll. Now we don't want all of these sticking right out of the top. That would look like some kind of monster. Give me a good idea there. Maybe I'll make something like that in the future. Add some fangs to the middle of that right there. But for some of these, we want to actually place the limb on the outside of the paper towel roll to change it up so it doesn't look so uniform. Now when I was done, I looked at this and I said, yeah, I had definitely had way too many of those on the inside. Not a big deal. We can just create the illusion of that trunk coming down the tree a little bit by sticking some foil on there and then fixing that joint uh, with some more aluminum foil. And it doesn't have to be totally perfect on here because what you're going to see how we're going to make the bark here in just a minute we're going to cover all of this up anyway so that's absolutely perfect now here's a trick right out of dm scotty's playbook hot glue for bark this actually worked out really well and all you need to do is squirt a bunch of hot glue onto the entire craft so you're going to go through you know a decent amount of it but once you have it on there i like to use this smaller glue gun to um, make the bark feature on it. And here all I'm doing is adding a little knot on the top of one of these branches right here. 
And as long as you let the hot glue cool a little bit, you can then re-sculpt it with the glue gun. Now I don't like to let the glue, um, you know, harden all the way. I like to work with it while it's still a little warm. It definitely is a lot easier to add the bark uh, when you do it uh, that way. And as you can see, all I'm doing is, again, just rubbing the hot glue gun over the hot glue and uh, that creates the bark uh, real easy. Now we have the main trunk or the main branches complete with the aluminum foil. Here I'm using some actual branches for the smaller branches coming off of the main branch there. Now I did uh, sanitize, sterilize, I think sanitize is the right word. Uh, sanitize these uh, in an oven 275 for like an hour and a half. Uh, I figured that was good enough because we're going to coat these in hot glue anyway and um, I'm not really worried about any um, anything growing on it. So here, um, learn from my mistake, ow! <laughs> uh, that hot glue gun puts out some seriously hot glue and uh, for the rest of the video uh, you're going to see a mark on my hand right there. That was really hot. When you do this, like so, make sure you're angling the branch away from you. So if it does drip, which it most likely is going to, it's not on your hand. Now for the roots, I didn't use a skewer because as you can see, I like to get kind of crazy with the roots. I'm going for a, a mystical, magical type tree here and I wanted some really funky looking roots. So all I'm doing is just splitting up the aluminum foil um, into little sections and work my way towards the thickest portion um, which would be the section that goes up against the tree. And I like to twist and, and turn a lot of these and that's another nice feature of working with aluminum foil uh, is that you can really sculpt these to however you want and then we're gonna coat all of this in hot glue and it really feels like a solid piece of work when you're done. All right, so I did a test of a few different spray paints uh, to see what would stick and nothing did to the hot glue. So I just went back to the old Mod Podge and black paint, worked really awesome. Paint the whole thing up, it'll cover up any aluminum foil that you might've missed covering with the hot glue. Now for our paint scheme, I, again, I wanted like a really mystical, magical type looking tree here. So I'm following this color scheme. You can see the colors in the background and you don't have to do each layer in a solid coat, right? You, as you saw earlier, the brown was thicker in some spots. It was really thin. You could almost see the Mod Podge in the background um, underneath that. So as you vary the color when you're painting it, it's really going to have that tree look a lot more believable because it's not going to be one solid color. And once you're happy with that, I coat the whole thing in some black wash. Again, I like to shake up my black wash, put it in a container, and then use that to paint it on my crafts. That way I don't have any foam from the wash itself. And now my favorite dry brush. Again, you can find all the links to every item I've used, all the tools, materials in the description below to all of my Amazon links. If you want to pick up any of those items, you'll find all the links there. So once we have our color of the tree done and we're happy with it, now the fun part for me, I absolutely love the embellishment portion when I'm doing crafts. So what we're doing here is we're adding some fungus to the tree. And I loved adding this. It was a lot of fun. You can get really creative with this. These, uh, Clay sculpting tools, in my opinion, were an absolute must for doing this because as you can see, that really fine tip will allow you to push that fungus into the uh, tree trunk itself and you can really get a nice adhesion to the tree. Now this is a different type of uh, mushroom that we're gonna add to the tree. You can see the ones in the background are all facing down. We're gonna paint those one color. These we're gonna have cupped facing up. I have something fun planned for these here in just a few minutes and we're also going to paint these a different color again going for the more magical fabled look and definitely using a couple of these sculpting tools 
and steady fingers helps out a lot. All right, once these are done, uh, again, I want these to be nice and bright and stand out. So we're gonna hit them with some white primer. And then we're gonna use a couple different colors to paint these up. Uh, my hand was extremely shaky here because the camera angle when I was doing this, trying to get this on film like this, had my wrist bent at a really weird angle. So, you know, it wasn't a huge deal because we're kind of wet blending all these colors together anyway. I used a retarder in all of these colors. Again, you can see the item number in the background there. Going from darkest color paint up against the tree to the lightest color all the way out the tip using this sun yellow. And the nice thing about this is it doesn't really matter, you know, what the paint looks like. It's a fantasy fake mushroom growing on the tree. It really can be anything you want it to be. Now these we're gonna go with a darker blue in the base of the mushroom to a lighter blue all the way out on the rim of the mushroom. And I couldn't have my wrist uh, be like that anymore for the camera so I had to hold them up like that. Now we're gonna take a Reichland Flesh Shade wash from Games Workshop and we're gonna use that to wash over all of the orange colored mushrooms and then I'm going to take a straight blue ink from Vallejo and paint up the blue mushrooms. That's going to give them a little bit of a glossy shine so it's going to make them look a little bit more uh, wet I guess. Now obviously once we finish washing our piece typically you do a dry brush over it which is what I'm doing here. Again this is with the sun yellow. And then we're gonna do a dry brush with the lighter blue um, once that dries on these blue mushrooms as well. Now, as you can see, this is pretty cool all by itself. I mean, you could stop here and have this dead tree if you want and do all kinds of cool things with it, but we're gonna keep going. We're gonna grab this Woodland Scenics Polyfiber and it comes compressed in the package. As you can see, you pull it out and you just fluff it up, all of that polyfiber, I just did a dry fit. It's all just sitting in there, nothing's glued in place, and that's one package of the polyfiber for this tree. Now I've tried a lot of different things to hold this in place, from tacky glue, PVA glue, none of that really works well, but hot glue holds it in place really awesome. You know, you don't have to worry too much about all those little strings that come off of the hot glue. We're going to cover most of this up, but if you can avoid them, try to do so. Now this is awesome here. You wanna take tacky glue mixed with a little bit of water and paint it right onto the polyfiber. Now, you don't want it too thick and you don't want it too thin. You can tell if it's too thin because the glue will start dripping through the polyfiber. But if it's too thick, you really can't paint it on. So the perfect amount will go on just like you saw here. And it will allow you to pretty much crumble up some clump foliage, again by Woodland Scenics. Uh, links to all these items in the description below where you can crumble these up and place them in small to medium pieces. You don't want large clumps on here. And right now we're going for about 90-95% 90, 90, coverage uh, over the top canopy of the tree. You want to do the top and you want to do underneath as well. But don't worry about covering all of it because in just a minute we're going to grab a lighter clump foliage to go over and highlight all these leaves. So as you can see, all you have to do, it's real simple, just take some more of that watered down tacky glue, uh, Eileen's tacky glue, place it right on top of your original clump foliage and it's gonna sort of absorb into all of the foliage and it's gonna hold it right in place really nice. And you can see that 90% coverage. I still got some polyfiber showing. Just go back afterwards, touch it up, and don't worry about any of that white tacky glue showing. It dries completely clear, stress-free, and just touch up the areas that you missed when you're done. All right, we're gonna get into some more of the details here. In these blue mushrooms, we are going to add a little bit of Vallejo uh, liquid effect so that each one of these mushrooms are holding little puddles of water. So in my world, these mushrooms are just some magical little thing that, you know, or just have grown this way. And that's how they 
uh, live in the environment. Now I'm going to grab these tabletop art ravens. In my opinion, these are extremely detailed. They're awesome little miniatures but they're really small for what would be considered a raven. So I'm gonna use them sort of as like a songbird and we're gonna paint these up red after we hit them up with a primer, a white primer. The bellies on them, I'm gonna do an orange. The feet, I'm gonna do yellow and then the beak and the eyes will be black. And I'm just painting up two of these for this tree. Now, a little bit of super glue on the feet of that bird, a little bit of accelerant on that Q-tip, and we can place that bird right on that fungus or mushroom, and it's going to look like he's drinking water out of it. I thought that was uh, a really cool idea, so had to do it. And then the other bird on the left here, we're going to put that one on as well, kind of just uh, looking over this one as he's drinking some water. Okay, now this is a uh, Reaper Squirrel from I think their Familiar Pack 4. And we're going to prime him uh, in some white, do a dark gray undercoat, uh, and then we'll do a couple of uh, dry brushes here. This one isn't the German gray. That was like a stonewall gray right here. And then we're going to just keep highlighting this thing, bring it up pretty bright, because as you can see, when you hit it with some Nuln Oil, it really is going to knock down that color and not a big deal because we're going to go back again with that stonewall gray. I added a little bit of white to really make it pop on the tree uh, as well to really brighten that gray up. And then uh, this little guy was holding an acorn so we had to paint the acorn brown you know for the uh, real particular person that's going to inspect all your crafts. Um, I couldn't leave that gray. All right, now with some white paint, I've thinned this down just a little bit. Um, we're able to do the uh, white part of this squirrel's eye. And then again, thin down a little bit, just some black paint to add the pupil. All right, now if you remember earlier, we made this knot in the tree. It's on the top. What we're going to do is add a little bit of hot glue in here and then we'll be able to stick the squirrel right on top, perched, checking out the entire forest um, from his favorite little tree. And I sound like Bob Ross right now. <laughs> All right, and just like that, he's in there. So I'm really happy with the way this tree turned out. It's already given me some other ideas for some other tree styles that I want to do. So you're definitely going to see more trees here on this channel in the little tree series. If you like the video, please consider liking, sharing, leaving a comment, helping this channel really take off. And also, if you like the channel, please consider heading on over to Patreon and supporting me over there. I've got a couple of cool tiers that you can check out. One of them being Tabletop Witchcrafts The Coven, which is a private Facebook page where you can share all of your really cool crafts with me and we can chat some more in person. Alright, until next time, I'll see you around.